Hello and welcome back to Lady Dynamite Creates. This is Tiffany and I'm so excited because I managed to get my hands on one of the new Monster High dolls and we're going to repaint that today. I was really wanting to get a Draculaura because I loved her curvy shape, but unfortunately I couldn't find one in my area, so I chose Cleo instead because I really loved how thick her thighs were. She's a girl after my own heart. I'm a little torn on the new Monster High dolls because I can't decide if I love them or I hate them because they've got so many good things about them, but there's so many drawbacks too. I love the diversity in the body shapes on the dolls and I'm liking their face molds and I think the ears on them are absolutely adorable. I love how they stick out just a little bit, but the molded on features are kind of a deal breaker. I really hate that. They come with a lot of really cute accessories, but honestly, I would have rather just had a stand and I don't think some thought was put into things like Cleo comes with a long sleeve dress and a jacket. It's near impossible to get the jacket on and when you get it on her, her arms don't bend right anymore. I also feel like the shoes kind of let me down a bit too because Monster High was known for their incredible shoes and just the crazy designs they would do and these just seem to be a little lackluster. On the plus side of things, the hair on the G3 Monster High is very soft and from what I've heard they don't use the glue in the hair anymore so you don't have to worry about these starting to yellow the vinyl over time and get really sticky and nasty which is a big plus. I'm also a big fan of the joint in the chest, I like that extra posability. And also, if I was someone who was buying these dolls to actually keep them as is, I do really like the factory face-ups. I do, however, wonder about quality control on these dolls because not only did mine have some staining here on the shoulder, I've also heard other people complaining about factory misprints on the face. So just be on the lookout for that. One thing that really does concern me is when pulling off the hands, you notice that the vinyl of the hand is pulling away from the harder plastic of the peg. I'm zooming in so you can see this right here. I feel like that's going to result in quite a few broken and missing hands on these dolls. Enough talking about the doll, let's move on to getting her prepped. I plan on keeping her factory reroot, so I've wrapped her hair up to protect it, and I'm going to use 100% acetone and remove all of her factory face paint. With all the factory paint removed, you can see she does have a really cute mold. I wipe off her face to remove any of the leftover residue from the acetone, and then I get her sprayed with three coats of Mr. Super Clear. The Mr. Super Clear prepares the surface of the vinyl and gives it a paper-like texture that allows for the pastels and watercolor pencils to adhere to the vinyl. I use various watercolor pencils and pastels on the doll, but a full list is available in the description box below. I get started with her face up by defining in her eye shapes. I am trying to keep this doll relatively simple by just doing a face up this time around. Between spending 10 days visiting family for a wedding and then just life being busy, my daughter went and got COVID on top of it, so I'm having to worry that I'm going to catch it and be out of commission while I'm supposed to be working on my next doll, so this one had to be a, a bit of a short project. Now that I'm happy with her eye shape, I begin to color and add some shading around her waterline. I start defining where her pupil and iris placement are going to be, and I begin by just placing down the dot of the pupil and then circling around that. However, I realize she looks a little bit too surprised, so I have to erase that and fix it. fill in her scleras using a white watercolor pencil. This is my Karen Dash Super Color Watercolor Pencil. I really like this one for doing the whites of the eyes. It's very opaque considering it's a watercolor. It's also very smooth and creamy. I did find drawing on her eyes a bit challenging because she does have a molded on eyelid crease. I usually draw my eyes on a bit smaller than what the molded on space is, so if I do continue to paint these dolls, that's going to be something that I have to figure out a way to work around. I start blocking in the color of her eyes and I'm choosing shades of turquoise and yellow so that it matches her outfit. I cover her completely with colorless blender and then I'm going to start doing some contouring and shading. The colorless blender just helps the pastels to blend more evenly. One of my favorite things to do is applying the eyeshadow. I build this up slowly and apply layer upon layer throughout the course of the whole face up. I dust on some blues and yellows to give her skin tone some dimension. I 
I lightly dust various places of her face with some pinks. I sketch in some details to her lips, but because I don't want these to look too harsh, I'm going to take my blending pencil and rub these and soften those edges. I use a brown watercolor pencil to start darkening up any of the crevices that are really tight, like around her ears, the philtrum, and her nose. After that, I do just the opposite and I take my white watercolor pencil and start hitting up any of the highlight areas. Once that's complete, I seal and start on layer two. Layer two, of course, starts with eyebrows because I always have to do those on a fresh layer because I tend to have to erase a lot. I sketch these in loosely with pastel and once I'm happy with the overall shape, I refine it a little bit more with an eraser. I start building up more color and deepening that eyeshadow. I wanted to say a big thank you to all of my friends over on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. Angel Book Walter, B. Burnett, Deborah Sweeney, Stormcrow Studios, Angelica, Jennifer Medina, OOAK Magpie, Dollicious, Thury, Amber S., Bex Mini Studio, Camille, Don Magana, and Kitsy. If you're interested in becoming one of my Patreon supporters, please be sure to check out the link in the description box. I use various shades of my watercolor pencils and start adding some details to her eyes. Using a very sharp brown watercolor pencil, I begin to add in individual hairs to her eyebrows. I'm making sure to use one of my harder leaded pencils because it helps me to keep the lines extra fine. I darken up her eyeliner and after that I begin to lightly sketch in her eye of Horus and her winged liner. I first do this with a light brown so that in case I do mess up, it's easier for me to erase. When I'm satisfied with the results, I do go back in with a black and darken it. And I know I've been on a kick giving dolls beauty marks lately, but I just couldn't help myself. I just felt like they look so cute on her and they give her such character. Once I had her beauty marks in place, I gave her a seal again. And on this fresh layer, I'm gonna start working on her lashes. I work on adding both the top and the bottom. After I have the lashes drawn, I use a bit of pastel directly on top to soften up the look. After that's done, I'm using some white gouache paint and I'm going to paint in her catch lights as well as some highlights to her waterline. The only thing this Egyptian queen is missing is some sparkle. So I'm applying a generous amount of shimmery gold mica powder all over her face. Then I'm going to get her sealed with her final coats of Mr. Super Clear. I give her three final coats just to make sure that she's nice and protected. 
So let's make some stickers to go with her. Over the past few weeks, my husband's been doing some sketches of the Universal Monsters, and he had been wanting me to turn them into stickers. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to do that, and I could include them with her as a doll because after all, she is the daughter of the mummy. This gave me the perfect opportunity to try out the M1's print and cut functionality. One of my problems with making stickers on the Cricut is the amount of space that you lose because of their border. Here is the border that the M1 is going to be using. It's very minimal. And here is the one for the Cricut. I would either have to make this multiple pages or I was gonna have to shrink these down a good bit. I get these prepped and saved out as a PNG with a transparent background. I open Xtool Creative Space and I set it up to do the print and blade cut. Then I import my PNG. With my image selected, I set it to outline and I set my offset distance to zero because I've already set up those parameters in the file itself. I set my material up to white sticker paper. However, I did go back and change this because I wanted my paper to be cut all the way through so that they were individual stickers and this was only doing the top layer. I tell it to process and then I tell it to print. Now that I have my sticker sheet printed, I bring it over and I place it onto the cutting mat and position the cutting mat inside the machine and then tell it to get cutting. These turned out really cool and I can't wait to do a few more stickers. Now let's make some packaging. I'd been playing around with the idea of creating some boxes for my dolls so that when they're not on display, there's a safe place for them to be stored. I downloaded a box file off of Etsy and I'll leave a link to this in the description box. I did a bit of editing to the file so that it would fit my dolls and then I customized it with my branding. I pulled the file into Xtool Creative Space and set it up to the correct parameters and then I bring in my engraving portions as well. Then I tell it to get to work. Now that it's finished processing, I can pull all of my pieces out and get them cleaned up. Because it's using a laser to cut the edges, I do need to clean them up and remove some of the charring, otherwise you'll get black stuff all over your hands. I rub it with a wet cloth and lightly sand it. To start the assembly, I first glue down the slide areas onto the sides. I begin to assemble the sides and I'm making sure to run the glue down the seam and hit the tabs. Then I position those pieces together. Next I glue on the top and the bottom in the same manner, however it's a bit trickier because I'm gluing on three sides, not just the one. With it all put together, the only thing left to do is slide in the front. And I also created her a certificate of authenticity as well. I did a few minor changes from the first design just because there were things that I didn't like about it. Now it's time to box her up. I've drilled holes that I've ran ribbons through that's going to hold the doll in place as well as her accessories. I don't want those banging around in the box and wind up damaging her face up. I do want your opinion on these boxes. I'm unsure if I should include these with every doll purchase or if it should just be an option. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I wanted to thank you guys so much for watching and if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Remember to turn on bell notifications so you never miss a video. Stay tuned till the end for some final reveal photos of Cleo. She will be available for purchase on my Etsy store, so if you're interested, please check her out. And remember, always be creating.